Okay, I'm gonna show how I just got my FlightAware, PiAware system online. This is the um, SDR receiver. I bought an inexpensive one. I didn't know if this can be fake and not work, but it seems to work. Not sure if it works as well as the others, but I'm gonna show all the pieces here and then I'll show how much they cost. This is a Pi 20W in its case. So it's a separate case. This is the antenna I got. It's a, um, you can see it's 80 SB, 1090 megahertz. It's just on a piece of uh, board here. I'm gonna put, mount this inside of a piece of PVC outside. And then of course the coax. I have a uh, longer piece. This is just for testing. So this is all you need. Oh, you need this cable here. This is called an OTG cable. It plugs into the Raspberry Pi 2W. And then it has the USB port to plug in this. And then it also supplies the power through here. So this is a double OTG cable. And this is the website where it tells you how to install the software onto the Pi. It's called PiAware. This is FlightAware. FlightAware website. So they have an open source software that you can put in and then it relays all their, it sends all the um, data that you receive up to their website. And they have all the directions on here, what you need to build it. And uh, here, you go to this, build, a build it. They have some videos and info. You can buy their receiver and a kit all together. But I bought them separately. I was trying to do it on the cheap. And um, when it's all installed, you get this page. See, I'm, I'm connected to uh, my Pi right now. And there's no plane showing now because it's sitting on my bench here. But I did get a couple before. It received a couple direct and they'll show up here. And then you can get all your statistics. And you go on their website because it feeds all the data to the FlightAware website. So I haven't tried it much because I just got it going. And, you know, you can get all these statistics and things. It's got info. I haven't dug into it, but um, this is the pie I bought. I bought it from Adafruit. It cost fifteen dollars plus a little bit of shipping, and then I bought the case for it off of AliExpress. They're only about three, but two or three, or about three dollars roughly. They have two versions of it. One the pins come out here at the side, and one they come out on the top. But I didn't even install the pins. You can see I didn't put the headers in because I'm not going to be using them. You'd have to solder those in. And um, and this is the antenna I got. It was only 250. Can't build one that cheap, so. And I got the, well, this doesn't show, but you can get the cable you need. I mean, there's all the options, but you want to get the right ends on there. And um, I can bring it in, and then you can pick out how, how long you want it. I'm trying to remember which one I ordered. There's the number, I guess. No, that's not the right one I ordered. Anyway, that was all the pieces, I think. Oh, no, I got the receiver. This is an expensive receiver. FlightAware sells one, and they're about twice that much. And um, this is supposed to have the amplifier, amplifier in it and a filter. So I didn't know if it'd be real or just some kind of printing on a regular SDR receiver, but it seems to work. This is the OTG cable you need. These are all from AliExpress. 
so you can order them all at the same time and they usually have free shipping over ten dollars see so that's all the pieces in to get this going and I it's a little bit warm so you definitely want to have the heat sink and I have it plugged into uh, it's drawing about um, half of an amp at five volts so I just have a power cube on it right now, so, you know, you want to keep it cool. So I'm going to put my longer piece of coax and put this, mount this antenna on a piece of PVC and mount it outside on a, on a pole so it gets better reception. And I have like 10 feet, I think 10 feet of this coax with the right ends on there. So anyway, that's the project. I guess I didn't tally up how much it all costs, but not too much. Or you can get the kit right from Flight Aware with all the pieces you need. Somewhere in here they have uh, they have it. There we go. You can get it all, all, all of it together. So have fun. Here's what my expenses were roughly for this. Uh, you need an SD card for the Raspberry Pi 2W. So get a decent one, um, SanDisk or Samsung. Don't get a cheap one because they wear out faster. And I just put ten dollars. You know, you, like a 64 gigabytes good enough. Um, Pi Zero W15, the Case 3. The um, SDR was 17 antenna, $3. Coax, $8. OTG cable, 58 comes to a total of $58. And then uh, I have this. I have a lot of these micro USB power supplies. Like for cell phones, you can pick them up anywhere. So I didn't add that expense. Anyway, I'm building the antenna right now, or the mount for the antenna. Here's the antenna. Got it on the long piece of coax. And I'm putting it in a piece of three-quarter inch PVC. It's um, electrical PVC. I painted it white. And I also bent it. You heat it up and you can bend it. And then when it cools, it hardens. So I'm going to put it in here. I don't have a cap, so I'm going to put a piece of rubber with a hose clamp on it for now until I get like a PVC cap to fit on it. And that should be good enough for my outdoor mount. I'll just, I will just use a U-bolt or something to hold it up on what I'm going to put it on. There's my antenna that I just put up. And I think this is the data on the, the SkyAware page. PiAware. I think this is the data I'm getting. I haven't quite figured this site out yet. But I think these are all the airplanes that I'm logging right now. So I guess it works. And I guess I could go and click on one of these planes. And it shows the data on them. So that's pretty good. Anyway, I guess it works. I had it on a different location and networked and that didn't seem to be working. Because of my networking. Different router. But anyway, I brought it back on the main one and here we go. Must just be my, my, um, because I'm here, so it's just got a radius like this it's receiving. So that's pretty good. I'll have to watch it for a while and see how it works. I like this feature. 
shows the radar. I just click on this. Next red weather radar. Yeah, I'll click it. Turns it on and off the radar. So that's kind of nice. And this, I can turn the trails on and off. I kind of like them. I don't have that many airplanes here, like in a city, but see, I can toggle aircraft tails on and off. So it kind of shows, I guess, where they came from. If they're flying in a straight line, that is. So pretty cool. And here's a map I got onto. It just shows all the airplanes. Not necessarily that I'm picking up, that other people are. But showing them in real time. You can see down here near Chicago, pretty busy. All these planes are probably heading up to Minneapolis. I wonder if I can zoom out on this map. Yeah, I can. So, lots of air traffic going on now. It's pretty interesting. All the airplanes flying all over the place. So, a success for my little project here. So here's my statistics page. Shows various data here. How many I've reported? 61. And 784 just since I turned it on, I guess, a while ago. And down here it shows rank, ADS, B mode, 34. This is how many positions, this is how many aircraft. So 34 aircraft, I guess, that I've picked up so far. It hasn't been on too long. Flights with positions from this feeder on FlightAware. So, those are the big planes, I guess, that are coming in from a long ways away. Tells where they started out from. Dane County Airport in Madison, Seattle. And this one's from Faribault, Minnesota. And down here, I don't know, this is all the different people are viewing this. So a lot to see on this site. You get free access to a lot of this stuff if you are a feeder like I am feeding in the data. So it's pretty cool. A lot to learn. But I like the live map. That shows just what I'm re what I'm getting in. Don't ask me how I get back to that. Maybe this one. I don't know. I'll have to play around with it. It's fun though. 